The data can be zero, one, or null. In order to hold that kind of data, we have this bit data type. SQL command is divided into data definition language, data manipulation language, data control language, transaction control language, and data query language. What is the name of a column, and what is the data type of that column? So this is how the syntax of alter you should use. Crop in the sense. completely we are demolishing or we are just removing this from the database hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome back to the session 2 of chapter 1 in the unit 3 of bcs first semester subject called fundamentals of computers i am rohini ts department of computer science vidya ashram first grade college temple of excellence mysuru just before getting into our today's session we'll have a quick recap here as you all know that in the last session of this chapter we had a discussion regarding database and also you got to know what is database management system and also we had a discussion regarding the difference between a file system and dbms or a, a file system versus dbms and we got to know that dbms is more efficient and effective than this file system and also we have studied what are the application we have in a dbms approach at last we got to know who are all the database users so in our today's session we'll start with a introduction to sql so already you know that we have a database and we have a database management system then how can i communicate with a dbms how can i communicate or how we are going to use a, that uh, database software in order to use that dbms we require one query language for that we have a standard sql or a structured query language and also and what are the different data types we have in a sql that means the type of data which is going to be specified and also we'll see what are the types of sql commands we have and that what are the categories we'll see everything in our today's session so first we'll start with a sql or a structured query language so this sql is a stands for or it's an acronym of the structured query language so why this sql is required mainly to access and manipulate the databases whatever the database we have in order to communicate with the database we require a query language then we have a standard called sql and this sql is considered as a standard of the american national standard institution in that is what ansi in the year 1986 and also of the international organization for standardization that is iso in the year 1987 so this is considered as a standard query language for this database so here you can see that mainly we are going to use this sql or a structured query language in order to store and to manage the data in the relational database management system so we can call that as a rdbms there you can store this or in order to store and manage the data of this rdbms when it is relational database management system at that time datas are going to be managed in the terms of table so there you can have this sql standard and it is considered as a language for the rdbms and mainly it is going to help us in order to uh, create read update and delete the relational databases as well as the tables and also MySQL, Infomix, Oracle, MS Access, and SQL Server will going to use this SQL as the standard for database language. So, all in this database management system, SQL is used as a standard or a language in order to communicate to a DBMS. And also, this SQL will going to allow the user to query the database in a number of ways using English-like statement. That's why it is making very easy in order to use this SQL query. query language so next what we have your sql data types now i got to know what is sql then we have to learn about its types of data it can hold or what are the different data types we have in a sql so mainly it is classified into three categories one is string data type when we have a, a set of character then i require the string data type and we have a numeric if you wanted to deal with the numbers then also we require this numeric data types and also we have a date and time data types in the sql so first we'll see about this string data types in this string data type moreover it is all related to char and uh, set of character so first we have a char of size so we have to mention a data type called char within bracket we have to mention its size for example if i am writing a char of 5 then it is going to allow me to store up to 5 character so mainly it is used to specify a fixed length of string that can contain 
numbers, letters and special character and its size can be 0 to 255 characters. So default is what? 1. If you are not giving any character, simply you are writing char data type and if you are giving a empty parenthesis and no argument, default it is going to assign only one character. Then we have a var care of size. So here also mainly used to specify a variable length string. So this is variable length string. This is fixed uh, length string. This var care is a variable length string and that can contain numbers, letters and special character but its size is greater than the char. So there in the char up to 255 character. That means total 256. Why? Because 0 to 255 is 256. But in this var char we can store up to 65,535 characters. Then we have a binary of size. Mainly somehow it is equal to char data type but it is going to show the binary byte string. So mainly in the size of parameter, it is going to specify the column length in the terms of bytes. So here you can specify binary of two bytes, three bytes like that. And then next we have a var binary size. Here only you can see that char var char binary var binary. Then what is that? It is also equal to var char, but here we are going to have a variable length string. That will going to store the binary byte string and also its size parameter specifies the maximum column length in the terms of bytes. If you wanted to specify the size of a column or attribute in the terms of bytes, then we have to use this var binary. Then we have a text of size. It is going to hold a string that can contain a maximum length of 255 character. Even you can use uh, text of size and var char of size or else uh, char of size in order to hold a minimum number of data. In order to hold large number of data, we require this var char. There you can also include numbers, letters, special characters, emojis and all. That's what uh, string data type. Next what we have? Numeric data type. It is going to deal with the uh, numbers. So what is the first one? Bit. It is an integer that can be 0, 1 or null. So the data can be 0, 1 or null. In order to hold that kind of data, we have this bit data type. Then we have a tiny int. So it allows the whole numbers from 0 to 255. So up to 256 character it can hold and it is going to allow the whole number. There should not be any fractional part. Then we have a small n that allows the whole number between minus 32,768 to 32,761 character. Then we have a int or integer data type. This allows the whole number and the range will be between this much. Then we have a big n. It even it is going to allow the whole number. So as you can see that from one uh, data type to another data type, the size will be varying rapidly. So that means what? It is giving high higher privileges in order to store the higher number of digits and we have a float of n. So if it is flows then it specifies the float precision number data from this minimum to maximum range and here you can have a n parameter that, in, uh, that is going to specify the uh, size. What must be the size of floating number? It can include both whole numbers as well as fractional part. Then we have a real. It includes the floating precision number which is greater than this float of n. So this real will going to hold more data than this float of n. So these are the numeric data type which we have in a SQL. Next what we have with respect to date and time. So if you wanted to display or to specify the date format like four years and months and date. Then this will going to be supported by the date data type. So here you can see the example. Next we have a date time. If you wanted to display both date and time together, then we have a date time data type. It is used to specify the date as well as the time combination and its format will be like this. So in here you can see that year, month and date along with that hour, minute, seconds. Then if you wanted to have both date and time together, then you can use the date time data type. Then we have a time. If it is only to specify the time format, that includes what? Hours, minutes and second. Then there you can use this time data type. Next only if you wanted to specify the year in the four digit like 2022, 1998, 1997. If that is the format you wanted to have then you ha can go with this year data type. This is how the data types of date and times look like. 
fine these are the data type which we have under the sql next here you can see the types or classification of sql commands so we got to know sql is a query language we are going to use this query language in order to talk to our database then how we are going to write a query what are the different formats we have different commands we have that you can see with a classification so this sql command is divided into data definition language data manipulation language data control language transaction control language and data query language so in the ddl we have a command call create drop alter and we have a truncate then in the dml or a data manipulation if i wanted to manipulate the data of database there we have a insert update and delete and dcl data control language we are controlling the data accessibility with the help of grant and revoke and also we have a tcl or a transaction control language there we have a commit rollback and save point then we have a dql or data query language there we have a select command which comes under that category so this is a broad classification as of now in our today's session we'll going to concentrate on this ddl language that is what data definition language so this language is used to define the data so that can be definition of a table definition of a view definition of a database as well so for that purpose we have this data definition language mainly it is going to change the structure of a table or it is going to change the structure of a database or a views so we can create we can alter and also we can delete so we can also do the truncating so all these can be done with the help of this data definition language and also all the commands of ddls are auto committed no need to save anything by default only it is going to get committed permanently it is going to save all the changes in the database then what are the commands which comes under this uh, data definition language create alter drop and truncate so we'll see each command with its syntax and example we'll see the first one first we have a create command so as the name indicates we are going to use a create command in order to create a table so in this it is used to create a new table in the database then how the syntax look like you have to use a create and then what we are creating table for that we should specify a name of a table then that is table name okay create and create as a command what we are creating table and i should give a unique name for a table so why because if i have a n number of tables in my database then the name should be different or unique so for that you need to mention the table name then what table consists of within that we should mention the column name so you all know how table look like correct no so here we have our table that comprises of rows these are all the rows and this consists of column then what this column should include then that column should include the name of a column and i have to specify its data type for example if i am taking a serial number of a student if i am taking a name or if i am taking a age and also if i am taking their address so all these are what attributes all these are column names i have to specify a data type already you got to know what are the different data types we have so for serial number what i can use i can use int data type so it will going to hold all numbers if i wanted to have a both characters and numbers at the time i should go with char or var char for name i should go with var char correct var char and also for age so we can have a date of birth for so that date and time format is also there and for address i have to go with a var char so all these are what we have to mention while we are creating a table so create table table name and within the parenthesis you have to send a parameters that include a column name and data type and how many number of columns you wanted to have you can have there is no limitation for column and its data type so you can see the example create table employee what kind of what is the table name here employee and that has three column one is name the data type is var char var char 2 of 20 what is the size 20 comma you should separate the columns so put comma after the declaration of one column then we have a email that is var char of 200 comma then date of birth and i'm taking a data of uh, data type as a date so how this table look like then this is going to have first the name of a table is employee and that comprises of name 
second column is what we have a email here and at last uh, we have date of birth okay but data are so not at field just we are creating a table fine this is how the create table command will going to look like next what we have alter so by mistake i had given only three columns but i wanted to take one more column i wanted to join or i wanted to add one more column then what can i do i have to change the structure of a table for that reason we have this alter command it is mainly used to alter the structure of the database it is going to change the structure of a table as well as the database this change could be either to modify the characteristics of an existing attributes or probably in order to add a new attribute for example date of birth i had given a integer as a data type but then i realized that for the data type uh, that uh, should be changed from integer to date so at that time what i can do i can alter the table so i can give a uh, different properties for existing column or else we can add a new column itself for that we have this alter table so in order to add new column to the table what we have to do we have to use a keyword or command called alter what we are altering table and i should specify a name of a table so if you wanted to alter first you have to create a table then there must be a data then only we can do the alteration directly we can't do the alteration without creating it so here alter table i should mention the name of a table then we have to use a keyword called add what we are adding we are adding a column there i should specify the column name and column definition what is the name of a column and what is the data type of that column so this is how the syntax of alter you should use what is the example alter table i have a table called student details you just imagine we have a two details then we are altering that table there were some uh, columns but now i wanted to add a new column called address and its data type is what worker of 20 i'm adding a new column to the address let me write the same thing for the previous table there we have a alter table what was the table name employee now i wanted to add phone number let me take phone number i'm using add and uh, i'm going to take phone number as a column name and we have a data type integer for it okay this is how i can add new column called phone number for the employee table along with this three column again now we are going to have one more column called phone number okay this is how we can do the alteration fine next what we have here drop so there is a difference between delete and drop delete in the sense what we are just clearing its content and drop in the sense completely we are demolishing or we are just removing this from the database itself mainly it is used to delete both the structure and record which is stored in the table and here you can see that drop table table name we should specify a drop command table and we should specify which table we wanted to drop so this employee table is no more in the database okay we can't see its content see the whole existence of this employee table in the database what we have next that is truncate it is used to delete all the rows from the table and free the space containing the table so here i am not deleting the whole table i am just deleting its content for example employee we consider in that we have a name email and we have a date of birth and phone number phone number imagine we had some date data abc then at gmail.com and it will be 18 12 22 and phone number will be some data okay some data is there but if i wanted to erase all these data i wanted to remove all the data from the rows then we have to use this truncate so whatever the data we have in the particular rows all the rows data will just get erased whenever we are using this truncate okay if you wanted to delete a particular row then delete if you wanted to delete a whole row of a table truncate if you wanted to delete the whole table from a database then 
drop. Very, very important. Those three. Next here you can see the syntax. Truncate table, table name. So here, truncate table, employee. Whatever we have in the employee table, every data of the row will just get erased. So if I look like, then it will just be a blank table without any data. Okay. There we can have this truncate command which comes under this data definition language. I hope you all understood regarding the data definition language in our coming session. We are going to see about the DML or a data manipulation language, data control language DCL and transaction control language that is TCL. Let me meet you there. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.